Hey, my name is David T.S. Wood and welcome to my extra mile into Greece. Uh, the show today, this amazing couple, this is all about legitimizing the profession of network marketing. Uh, we really get into the weeds, uh, the peaks, the valleys, the plateaus of really building a strong residual income. This couple are hilarious, they're funny, they're real, they're authentic, they have an incredible show. I wanna warn you though, the first 60 seconds of the show, uh, the sound qualities, I, I, I actually didn't have the connection right. So 60 seconds of sort of bad, bad quality sound and then it's gonna get back to normal. So uh, enjoy the show. We'll definitely see you on the other side and enjoy the incredible vlogs in Anna Richards. Hey Anna, hey Morgs, hello. Hey Dave. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? You know, I, first of all, I'm just gonna give a little plug to your new show. It's amazing. I was fortunate to be on it yesterday and I think you had it today and I just wanna give you a, a really, it was beautiful because I do a lot, a lot of, you know, recordings with people, different shows, but the sort of trifecta of, you know, the three of us, but your energies and the way that you, you know, the way you ask questions, the way you kind of feed off each other. And the fact is a brand new show doing so well. Um, and it's called Anything Goes. It's in the education section, I think, in Australia. And I just want to give that. I don't normally plug things right off the bat, but, you know, let's start there. Because if yeah. this one's crappy, at least they know where to go next. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, David. And obviously, I, I think just on that, we want to acknowledge you as well, because we've already had great feedback uh, yeah, on that specific point. But also just going back to the format and the way we do it, um, yeah. you're actually a big inspiration for that because going back to even the kick-ass life, the one thing that we loved about it, it was probably the first part we ever listened to Hands down. Um, was how it was just a conversation rather than an interview. And we've really tried to, to take that and bring it time we do listen to other podcasts, we're like, and we can't get into it, it's because you can tell it's just contrived. They'll set. stop a beautiful part of where something could have gone magnificently. The agenda's kind of already yeah, set. Yeah, it's like, no, but I was going to ask you this question. So, yeah. And you taught us that, so thank you. Yeah, well, it came across really, really well. I, just if you're listening, I, we just lost Morgs for a second there. It froze. That was because I was on the wrong Wi-Fi. So there you go. Technically <laughs> challenged. So <laughs> I'll make sure I talk about that. Listen, you know, let's talk about network marketing. Um, you know, you're both now. Uh, I would consider you professional network marketers. I don't know, Morgs, whether you give yourself that distinction yet because I know that you were sort of more in the background for a while, but there's something about, you know, legitimizing our profession, you know, and I always say the coolest, the funnest, the wealthiest, the happiest, the, the most generous, you know, the, the most adventurous, the kindest, the, you know, all the, our, of my friends are professional network marketers. What is it, Morgs? Why is it that, you know, we have to legitimize something that, you know, really, when you think about the impact it's had on the planet already and the impact it's always having, what, what, what's going on? What's, what, why, why is it so confusing? I think initially for a lot of people, um, the skepticism and, and sometimes the, the, the things that turn people away from, from network marketing can be the, they, they'd like to look at people who are on week one, right? It's like showing up to the, your, your job in week one. And they use this as an example of people who are inexperienced as this is sort of the benchmark for this industry. So explain though too, because you, this was you. This was me. Yeah. Like so you were the skeptic as well. Definitely. And that's how you had perceived it. I think because a lot, a lot of the time people's perception is the worst examples of network marketing is, mm. is, is the bar for the entire industry. Um, and for, so it took me a long time to actually um, meet people like you and obviously see Anna go on her journey initially with all of this to really and get to know and meet people that do it well and do it the right way um, for me to understand really what it was about and and really then from there become more open to actually taking a look at, at, at the industry and, and getting involved and being a part of it. I think yeah. as well what's come up for me when you're saying this that I've never really articulated, but it's like if you're a doctor, I mean, I shouldn't use a doctor as the example. This really if you're awesome. a hairdresser because people are like, she's comparing. If you're, a, doctor, if if you're a brain surgeon. <laughs> very a unique. Like a apprentice hairdresser. Yeah, and if, you're, if you're a hairdresser and you're a hairdresser, someone asks what you do or, you know, you hairdressing and you have a side hustle or whatever, you'd say the truth. Yeah. You'd be like, oh, look, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm a hairdresser or I'm in hairdressing or I'm learning to be a hairdresser. 
Or if you were a mechanic, you would say the same thing. But because I believe, I don't know, from past um, hang-ups in, in the 80s from network marketing, people shy away from it. And I think when you don't own your truth, other people will make up stories themselves and that's happened with the profession. So I remember when I came in, I was like, well, I'm in network marketing. And still today around the Gold Coast, if I go to networking events, people will say, you know, what do you do? And I say, well, you know, I'm lots of things. I'm a life enthusiast, but I'm in the, the profession of network marketing. And they're just like, wow, thank you for owning that truth. Like that yeah. wasn't weird at all. I know yeah. so many weird people. So I think if we could stand, I can even more so stand in the power of, um, owning that I am a proud professional network, network marketer. marketer or network marketer. I don't know if we're, no, we are professional. Um, some days, some days. <laughs> <laughs> Not some days, but some days. <laughs> we put on our professional hat. Um, but I know that that was the big thing for you. And when you watched me take it seriously, you took me seriously. Yeah, definitely as, as well. And I mean, I suppose what the point I was trying to make is that people come into this with, wanting some sort of change and some sort of transformation mm. um, in their life or in their lifestyle, but they lack the experience and they show up on day one without the skills and, and the, uh, the, the training and the understanding of how to connect with people and how to portray this industry um, in an authentic way. And I think sometimes a lot of people's interactions with people from our, our profession is on that sort of that, that infancy of, of learning how to do this. Um, and I think people have formed an opinion based on that. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, I know I had, I, I can't, I know. Yeah. Uh, well, I yeah. remember your skeptical years. <laughs> I say years, it wasn't days. <laughs> months. It was years. But, but I, I don't know, you think about it, you think about any other profession where, I mean, we're arguably one of the highest paid professions on the planet and you were a, a multi, oh, you were a six, I mean, over a six figure income earner before you started in this profession. So you were already sort of a very high income earner for your country, but, you know, I always feel like if we had the courage as a profession, what we would say is you're not allowed to talk to someone until you complete this program. And the program's two, a two-year program or a three-year program, like any other profession, a mechanic you talked about or a, or a hairdresser, you know, or a one-year program that we actually train you and we prepare you and we give you the skill set before you actually go out and engage. But the crazy thing with our profession is you start on Monday and on Monday evening, you're talking to your mother. <laughs> <laughs> or your asshole husband. Yeah. yeah. Or your asshole husband. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But, but, but what, what, why do you think we don't have the courage? Why, what is it about our profession that we don't have the courage to, to say? Because, you know, most people, if you said, look, you know, at the end of this program, you know, you're going to be able to uh, earn a six-figure income or a multiple six-figure income, whatever, you know, and, and you think about how many people go out and get student loans and they follow a career for four or five years without even knowing they even like it. Talk to me a little bit about that. You know, could we be, be more courageous as a profession? In, in what, like, yes, always, yes, both and always. But do you mean more so in how we position ourselves, in how we talk about come in, but exactly that ideology of, but you have to at least do some form of skill training and treat this like a profession, treat this like a degree? Is that pass, what you're saying? Yeah, pass a, pass a level of competency before, because to Mark's point, most people seem in, inauthentic because they're inauthentic because oh. they, they, they're kind of so wobbly and they're so new and they don't know what to say. So they're talking, you know, they're, they're in their heads, they're not even their hearts and they try and yeah. project something. They believe in it because they've seen it, but they have no skill of delivery. So people are picking up that kind of spider sense that you're full of crap, right? Yeah. So that's my point is wouldn't it be great if we had the courage to say, hey, you know, you've got you to pass this exam before we let you talk to a person. Hundred percent, right. and I think, and I, this, I believe, truly is where we've seen a really big shift in our business recently. Retention, so people staying on the products, even just as customers, is so phenomenal. With managing expectations better than ever, yeah, and having that conversation with them about all things in all ways, so business and even health, because obviously, you know, our company is about health transformation, but it's about having that conversation, saying that. I think maybe when I was 25 and fell in the door, like, I've just signed up to this thing. And yeah. You were like, it's a pyramid scheme. All, all enthusiasm and no, because I, Anna's, if you haven't worked it out, is like <laughs> the dreamer and I'm the realist, right? So she was all enthusiasm 
and no research. <laughs> she says, but I met this girl called Peter and I loved her. And it's like, we're going to change our lives. I had, gave her my credit card over yeah. the table. We had Chinese together and she drew out a business plan on the table. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the truth. And I, you so glad. <laughs> yeah. But I think today and then at 25, and I do believe in Australia, so I can speak to our country and our company and ourselves, mm. is that I know that back when I was 25 and we were pioneers for Australia in, in the profession, we kind of did sell this dream and it was, it was easy and there was all this like um, hype and momentum. And I think sometimes there's a little bit of a, uh, a hangover from that still as well. And so a lot of people will look to the profession and there, is mar there can be some marketing around it of, you know, it's easy and come in and it's get rich quick overnight and all these things. And it's not, it's this beautiful profession where if you learn the skills and you take the time to understand it and upskill and read the books and do some courses and, and like anything, I did a business degree. I had to spend three years writing business plans and international management plans and all these things. And at the end of that, it was like, okay, I had some more skills to apply in my job. Um, but if we could change that narrative and, and, and that's, I think, where the professional aspect of professional network marketing can come in. It's, it's a hard one because would you want someone to like basically pass a test before they can talk about something they're excited about? And then for me, I'm like, you know, then you just got some people who you just can't shut up. You know, it's just, you, and they just, you just got to let them off the lead and, I, I will say though, like, so we always used to say, and I still do say, so ignorance on fire is better than, what is it? Ignorance on fire is better than. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling the story, Chief. <laughs> better no, than that. Know, other, no, it's much better than that other thing. Yeah. <laughs> then you know the oh, then knowledge on ice. I oh, know, knowledge on ice. Yes. Yeah. There, there you go. However, I do also think that you can, like, I, so now I will say to women, you know, you might go home, you've just bought your first 30 day pack, and for some women, especially, it's a big investment and I'm like, your husband is probably going to be really mad at you <laughs> and you might have a fight with him before I, and you know, she'd go home and he, that would happen. And then it's like, but she was or, prepared. You know, she, right. yeah. And she, yeah. Or she'd go home and I'd say, you know, people might not want to do this with you and that's okay. We're going to teach you the skills. We're going to like plug you into some systems. We're going to work on your own transformation first. We're going to upskill some of your mindset and then we're going to go. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, but well, that's that maturity. Because how many years have you been doing network marketing, Anna? Seven years. Seven. Mogs, talk a little bit more because there's a lot of maybe husbands or women who are listening whose husbands are feeling much like you felt. What was that early kind of, you know, what were you projecting to Anna? I mean, obviously you're, you know, not, you're, you're young in your relationship as well. But what, what, was, what was your thought process? What was really happening behind the, the, the sort of the, the cover of your mind <laughs> about the profession? Were you like, she's going to fail soon? <laughs> you know what? It was like, she's going to fail. This is going to be over in a couple of months. It's going to be hobby money. You know, it's just going to be like 50 bucks here. We'll, we'll add it to it. Because we both had six-figure incomes at the time. So I was like, you know, this is kind of cute. Like you should tell, tell, tell everyone what you were doing. So, Morgs, what were you up to? I worked for a, a large multinational company. I was probably middle management. Um, and my job was to look after three states and implementing their health and safety management system. So, All right. And Anna? He was the safety guy. So I had spent four years in federal politics on six figures, left for like six months, had jumped across as a business development manager in a mining company. So then I was doing that and then that's when I find Arsogenics. It's funny because you recently have yeah, been sort of talking politics on your social media and created some viral videos. And, you know, I, and I, I was wondering about that, you know, because when I was watching it, I could see your passion. Right? Now I, I forgot about the politics part. Going back to you, though, Morgan, what was going on in your mind? You know, you're both six-figure income earners and now you're watching it come. I'm all excited. You know, and talk about the journey. What happened in the beginning and how did you cross the bridge? Mm -hmm. And now you're a believer, not only a believer, but you really have a professional point of view and understanding. And you really, the, the empathy you now have for people who are where you were is, and, and that's often the case, right? Because you were there, you understand it more than most, right? Yeah. Well, I think in the beginning, um, you know, to be honest, there was a part of me when Anna started to do well, I was kind of hoping she'd fail. Um, because I was like, oh, I don't want, because I still, oh. I still had all these hangups about it. I was like, oh, I don't want her to become one of these people. Yeah, and really what I was more concerned about was mine and our um, collective social, social standing. standing. Yeah. 
because I was worried about what other people were going to think and say and talk about us and all that sort of stuff. And Which they were already doing anyway. Sure, yeah, well, it's true so. too. Um, but, um, you know, as many companies do, ours had a trip on. Um, you could win a trip to Vegas and all that sort of stuff. And she was in it. She was doing really well. And part of me was like, oh, please don't win. Please don't win. <laughs> please don't win. And she won. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Damn it. And, um, oh. but then, she, uh, then obviously along the way, she won a trip and, you know, we still had full-time incomes and she'd been earning income and she used that income to pay for me to go to Vegas because I didn't win a spot. She did. Yeah. Um, so I went along and, you know, it was at that event. It's where I first saw you speak, actually, that event. You were up stage, on stage, working the stage, running around. And I, I felt so, who is this guy and what is that accent? <laughs> <laughs> what is that like, accent? <laughs> yeah. And, um, but I was like, well, and I listened to you. I was like, hey, this guy actually makes a lot of sense. And I suppose it was there that I sort of, it was, that was kind of the fork in the road where I started to sort of veer in the direction of wanting to learn more and understand more. Um, and do I think that, like, do you remember though, what, I mean, I, I was, this wasn't a plug for me cause I, I didn't remember this part, but what was the message you were hearing that was getting you to turn the corner? Cause maybe some people haven't heard that message yet. Well, they yeah, okay, it, so, hasn't left. so it was two things. Well, it was, it was, I can't remember what it was about that event specifically that you said. I just remember your energy and your certainty on stage, but then it was coming back to Australia. I remember because you were someone of, because I remember you, I remember the, it all. You were someone of so, like social esteem to Morgan. You, mm. you, you know, you'd explain about T. Havecker and there were all that. So you were like, oh, wow, this guy is like a somebody in, in our eyes. And you weren't necessarily connected to the company necessarily. Mm. Like you weren't corporate staff. You weren't, you were this master trainer that was coming on to train us from a mindset perspective. And you were just like, oh, wow. Like, yeah. And it was, it was like, they're investing. It was still very much like you, 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 like to me. And he, they were, he's like, well, they're investing in you yeah. with someone like this. Like that's pretty, like my bo- my job doesn't do that. Well, it was, that was, I think that was what allowed me to build trust with David. And mm-hmm. then it was about three months later, you were doing your own event in Australia. Um, and that was the first sort of like, you know, intimate training that we'd done with you. Um, and it was just you explaining about the profession, you know, talking about the, the differences between being an investor, being an employee, mm. being self-employed and all those sorts of things, which are all great and wonderful, all have their pros and cons. But when we compare it to network marketing, um, what what the upsides are and you know, things about leverage and how this is actually, you know, like like an apprenticeship, you've got to learn some skills along the way. And that had never occurred to me. I was like, what do you mean? Yeah. Oh, hang on a minute. That's right. This is my, my logical brain. It's like, oh, there's a, there's a process. There's a system to this. This isn't just out you know, while we're shooting from the hip, putting out messages on Facebook, it's about planning it and treating it like a business yeah. and, and, and treating your people that want to do this with you, um, you know, not like, not like not employees, but as like partners that you want to have as much and a more success than you. And so once I kind, that was the kind of, that was it. It was, it was those things. It was being able to appeal to my logical brain rather than her, just her, because she was all emotion and excitement. Yeah, 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 for yeah. me, I'm like... This, this is me excited right now. This is what you get. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> That's like quite high excitement. Yeah. It's more this like... Is, but, but you just said something there, Morgan, I think was interesting. Anna, you know, it's like some people who join you, you kind of do have to treat a little bit like employees, I'm right? Because sure. they don't have any kind of entrepreneurial background or understanding. They've never worked for themselves. So they're a bit lost. And so, you yeah. know, it's all right to say, yeah, you're the CEO of your own global business that you can grow in your pajamas. And they don't <laughs> know what that means, right? Because they used to being told what to do. So, but there's also the other factor. Some people come in and they already have the skills. Like, you know, you both had some, some pretty developed skills, uh, yeah. people skills, you know, business skills, you know, uh, networking mind. skills. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, isn't it interesting though that, you know, how different people need to be led and, and that's a journey for you as well as learning because, you know, learning how to lead and lead different types of people and, and they're all volunteers. I mean, how's that been for you? How's that journey been? I always say, I think for, me anyway this is actually a question i get a lot and how do you you know i don't feel ready to leave and i these are from phenomenal strong women say in our team and external to our team or and company that are already leading and i think it's just that for me the journey was i didn't i don't know i i, I started before i was ready 
I wasn't, I didn't wear the title. Like I wasn't like, oh, I'm a leader now because, or I wasn't like, I will be a leader when this happens. I know for myself anyway, in the beginning, because it was really quick for us. Like I started, I saw the the vision for the, prof- like I just, the business model of network marketing made so much sense to me. And I, so I saw that for myself. I saw, I applied that to the goals that I wanted to achieve in our own life, my own life. Um, and I got to work. So, you know, all of a sudden I was doing business training in a profession that I, I didn't even understand. I was learning with them at the house on a Monday night, you know, all 20, 30 women would come over. Not just I was, on the other house. I mean, back then you were doing it on the beach. Do you remember? You, used to, you know, like, you know, trainings on the beach. I, I remember yeah. those early days, right? In our bikinis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, it was just... And more, more you, your bikini was beautiful. I mean, it was... It was <laughs> man Katie. Yeah, it was man Katie. Um, hot. So hot. But it was just about... I think it was taking the pressure off of the title. If I had to look back... I mean, I could never have articulated this then in the moment of it, but looking back um, on leadership, I think it was really about not putting the pressure of the title on myself and just being in the trenches with everyone, failing forward and being like linking arms and being like, well, I'm going so you can come with me and I'm going to show up no matter what. And that to me was kind of leadership. And still today, seven years in, like you see it day in, day out, day in, day out, that even if I don't feel like it, even if I don't feel ready, even if I'm scared, even if I'm doubting myself, even if something happens that could take me out, it's like I'll show up. And I think that leadership for me is that it's about, it's, I just remember almost overnight starting to lead this team, but not being like, well, I'm a leader. It was like, well, I'm just in the trenches with you and we're going to the mountaintop and let's just keep going. Cause even when we get there, there'll be a bigger mountain. So I think it was just about no pressure um, and constantly being with everyone and still today. Being yeah. like in the trenches. Interesting. You said something though, and I want to unpack it a little bit. You said network marketing made so much sense to me. And I wonder why, because it obviously doesn't to a lot of people because it scares the crap out of them because, you know, the idea of going to talk to people and the rejection factor. What, 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 what was it about it after you had these degrees, you'd worked in politics, mm-hmm. you know, you were, you were, you were a high income earner, you were respected mm-hmm. in your field. But what, what was it when you heard about it that made sense to you? So I had always loved business. I grew up in poverty myself. I, we used to eat out-of-date food. I grew up in a lot of domestic violence. And so we, and money was the biggest factor for it all. So we couldn't eat the right food or we couldn't feed ourselves because we had no money. You know, my beautiful mum had to stay in a violent relationship because she just felt like she, she didn't have the money and she always gives me permission to talk about this. But, um, you know, there was no money to flee and, and it was always about money. So I remember then being 18, this is where it all began, and I got a job in an accounting firm as a junior receptionist and I used to, and there are our amazing accountants today who are like our really good friends, but um, I used to stick the back of, I used to get coffees, answer the phone and stick sign here stickers on tax returns. And I used to flip, I, I started to get a, like, look, love numbers. I loved numbers. And I used to always flick right to the back and, and started to teach myself how to learn profit and loss statements. And I remember talking to my boss one day, Peter Bodycoat, and saying, how do these, and it was always men, and I was 18, and I'm like, how do these men earn millions of dollars, right? And so I'd do their company tax return, and then, like, some of their employees would be at the firm, and they're employees, and I'd stick their tax returns and flip to the back, and it was like 50 grand, 40 grand, 70 grand. I'm like, ugh. I want the company tax return. And I remember asking Peter Body, I said, Peter, and he goes, ask them. Ask them, like build relationships, ask them. They'll love that you're young and you want these answers. So I started to be like, I want to earn money and how I'm going to earn money is business, not as an employee. That was that was where the, the, the beginning was born. And then I got into politics and for four years sat with franchisors, sat with franchisees, sat with CEOs, sat with billionaires and talked to them about business. I'd sit in the chairman's lounge of the Qantas Club and just, you know, go and pour myself a, a, a blue label Jim Beam just to get close to the Johnny know, Walker, Johnny Walker. millionaire, <laughs> billionaire men that were pouring their own. I didn't even, that's a point. I didn't even like it, but it, I would do that. What do you do? You know, what do you do? I was, I was always interested in business. And I remember when, um, so when 
I said, and then, you know, business development manager for a mining company. I remember at uni, we had to take a product um, and ex, um, literally take a product and I took wine and export it to another country. So it was just always business, business, business. So when this freaking compensation plan got drawn out for me and I knew the risk, I knew so many men my whole life, because it was always men, had come into the front of the accounting firm and I'd have to quickly, you know, they were insolvent and there were so many issues with traditional business that here I am sitting across from this bogan at the time, PK, who just had grown up in like a lower socioeconomic suburb who was, you know, I think tried to even go barefoot to dinner, like just total like. She still does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like total rat bag. And we would connect it just for, you know, people had, Emma had said to us, you two have to meet, you guys would get along. And she was just this energetic, crazy, awesome chick. And I was telling her my goals and dreams. And I said, she, and I, said I want to retire my mum. And she said, how are you going to do it? And I said, well, I don't know, but I know it's not going to be a job. It's going to be with business. And she's like, well, here's how. And she drew the comp plan. And so all those, what, seven years of experience of looking at traditional business, setting companies up for other men, making them insolvent, sitting with CEOs, millionaires, billionaires, being in politics, it was like, here is this friggin' comp plan where you eat a product, you share it, and you get freaking paid. Like, that is ridiculous. That is so ridiculous. Those of you are listening, that is the elevated version of the compensation plan. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so much work and it takes time and skills and commitment and yeah. all the things. But innately, it is about word of mouth. And I was like, I can do that. I frig, if yeah. I like this product, like my hair, I'm red. It's like, I, I, get, I got stopped in the girls' toilets at the gym today. Three women were like, who is your hairdresser? I'm like, God, if only she paid me. Like, I, and it's just, we're such innate sharers. So it made so Actually, much. Actually, that's very subtle. I think maybe you have to say that again. It's like everyone's asking you about your hairdresser and it, when, you, when you recommend her, you don't get paid. And that's why this makes sense to you is because when you recommend the products that you love and, you know, if you were to stand up and show your body, I know you're doing triathlons, you know, you're incredibly fit and you reflect the nutrition that you eat, um, more of you can stay silly. No, um, I'm just <laughs> But <laughs> well, Morgan, I have a question for you. We listen to yeah. Anna. Why is it you think that the industry is dominated by women? I know you've got a very logical mind and you watch, but what is it about the profession and the attraction of women and the domination of women in the profession? Yeah, I think it's something I've thought about a lot and I think it's actually pretty simple and I think it's something that's probably more biological than anything else. Women are much more open. They're much more touchy-feely. They're able to connect with people on, a, on an emotional level. And we know that when... The, if we just call this, call this just the sales process, we know that people mm -hmm. um, will, will buy, consume and connect to a community, not for what it actually does, the bells and whistles, but for how it makes them feel. Mm. And when it comes to feelings and communicating feelings, women are just far better at that innately than men. Uh, I do believe it's a skill that can be learned, but I think when we talk about natural talent and natural skills, I think that's something that women um, are just uh, are, are better and quicker at achieving than most men. Present company excluded. <laughs> <laughs> you mean but me? You're talking yeah, about me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I talked about this the other day. The superpower. I don't know. Yeah. It's just it's one of those things. I, think I watch Anna do it, and I think men we we we're, we're a bit more tribal in the sense that we have our 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 close knit, knit network, uh, and we are very protective of that. And for us to branch out and maybe leave that or bring other people in it's i don't know i think it can be more challenge, challenging for men the greatest example is like if when i'm doing recovery from try like a some block training i'll get in the sauna and i'll walk out of the sauna with like three brand new friends and i've been invited to like parties and try clubs and I've like i know to, their I've, life story I've and talk to one person get <laughs> He's, what, he's like... Oh, in an elevator? He hates oh, it. He I'm like, was, she'll talk to people, talk to me even in an elevator with this other people. I'm like, shut up. Like, just stand there and be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> she'll talk to me in the elevator. Shut up. <laughs> Elevators are not for talking. And you would hate it when I'm in the elevator because I always put my back to the door and face the people. I know. <laughs> I love it. This is why we're like, I know. And so pregnant I know. You both make me sick. Yeah. <laughs> So, so Anna, just for a second to give people a reference, you know, what is, because I want to talk about the peaks and valleys and plateaus and because, you know, um, but your income, 
uh, has had a probably gone through that cycle. Like most other businesses, most other, you think about business right now, and again, I don't need to mention what's going on, but most of you are listening understand what's going on. But the, the natural peaks, valleys, and plateaus of every business and cycles of life, I mean, if you look at cycles, just a cycle of, of, of our bodies, right? There's the peak valleys and plateaus. But talk to me a little bit about how much, what's been your highest income that you've made in a year since joining Network Marketing in the last seven years, can I ask? Of course. So compliantly. Um, so oh, our yeah. first Oh, by year, the way, this is not normal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> read the disclaimer, Uh-oh. please. Read the disclaimer. My, my lawyer friends are going to be very happy I said that. But please read it because what happens is you have a very – so, so your amount of conversations, the hard work you put in is reflective of this number. And that's what people have to understand. It's not like, hey, we're saying every single person that joins, if they sit on their butt and talk to three people a year, they're not going to make this kind of money. But I'm just fascinated. You're both six-figure income earners. Now you're both professional network marketers working together, which again, I'm, I'm interested to explore. But what's been your income? What's, what's it look like? So the first year, and this still makes me freak, I'm like, what the hell did I do? But the first year when I was 25, ignorance on fire, worked the hardest I ever have though, mm. I will say that. That. Um, I, I made because you were sort of still half in, half out, four hundred thousand dollars. I was going to say very, very, very huge, high, that's, high, that high, is not high, at all. And and since then, but I want to say since then, we've earned two hundred thousand ever since. Yes. So, or and just or some some years it's like two eighty, some years it's you know two twenty, some years. So that was the biggest year we've ever had, um, and I think that's from more like. July to July. Well, and the different bonuses that happen and what the, the events yeah. you win. And because yeah, there's a lot of promotions that, that amplify that kind of income. Yeah, but the, such a great point. And this is what we need to talk about because a lot of people don't, this idea that your income's been up and now you've mentioned 200 and then 220 and then 240, then 280, right? And what I want to say, and David, you'll honor this. I'm like, I, I will like butt in on this and something that we're really proud of as network marketers or I don't know, like young people with financial literacy that we've had to fail forward with and learn. But when we had our highest income, our lifestyle didn't start, we didn't start to spend at that. And I think that's just a lesson in business and in life. When for us, we've squirreled away, like we have lived an, I mean, we still do live an extraordinary life. We've traveled the world, five star, first class, not flight first class, but just beautiful hotels and beautiful experiences. But, you know, in that $400,000 year, I was still driving, still now, right now, we just bought a new car, but paid for it cash. Like, it's like, we still drove and still drive until next Monday. Um, Our 2012 Hyundai i30. A little hatchback. And I'll go to meetings. People know, like, uh, we've done really well and I'll rock up because I just don't care. I'm like, our lifestyle has always just matched more of our six-figure income lifestyle. Let's say that. Not like the highest month we've ever had. We don't go out and buy a jet ski and a Range Rover and all these things, which I personally believe if we're going to have a really honest conversation in network marketing, that's where a lot of network marketers can go wrong because mm. we don't, you know, we come into this. We, the, I've never earned that much in my life still. I had a great income, but I never earned that much. So you start to go, oh, this is going to, go on forever and you you over leverage you buy things that maybe you shouldn't have and then your income because it does starts well, I, to go down it might half you might plateau for three years like we have you might go through all these things but and then you get desperate and then you get you know you start to um blame, do, blame well. you start to do things that aren't Justified. in your character yeah yeah, yeah. I think and then, or you'll leave the company even though you're not it's and you leave the company not for the right reason. You leave the company because, and not just ours, I mean across the Support. field, um, because there's a shiny, can, you know, dangly carrot. Well, and I think that, can- that, that part is the shiny carrot somewhere else, but it's also that feeling defeated, not understanding the natural cycles of building the, because we're building a legacy income. And Morgs, you may want to jump on this. Legacy income is those years of building the foundation and building the leadership deep so that, I mean, you think about what your income is going to be in seven more years because you're seven years in. And now with everything you've learned and the ground, how grounded you are, the process of you growing people has completely radically changed. I am guessing right now your income is starting to grow again as you've gone through the plateau. And I don't know, we haven't talked about it. I can tell right and you can see what's happening and so now you're going to build building on on rock whereas before building on ignorance a little bit building on hope building on a lot of things sand 
<laughs> right, right. But what you, what you said, which I want to reiterate before I come back to you, Morgs, on this, is that simplifying or keeping our life simple and using this as a part-time income yep. until you build the stability, because it's a, a rocking part-time income, right? Building that stability, that foundation, or riding out the peaks and valleys and plateaus as you're doing the build, right, so that you are not in that position of, of, of desperation, which I think, again, we've, we've seen. People make a lot of money, they go spend a lot of money. You suddenly see a guy that was, you know, <laughs> I won't use a profession in case someone thinks we're talking about him, but someone who's, <laughs> making, someone who's making, you know, $45,000 a year is now driving a $160,000 car, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and, you know, and if, it, right? So, Morgs, just jump in here. What's your sense about this? Because I know that, you know, money's important to you, so. Yeah, look, it is. And I think um, the one thing I've noticed that, when people start to have success in network marketing, um, because success, one of, it, it doesn't, it really it doesn't happen quickly. But when it does happen quickly for some people, they build a lifestyle around their biggest paycheck. Yeah. Um, and we see that sometimes. And what happens, like Anna mentioned, is that um, trying to maintain a lifestyle around that creates tension and animosity. And that's where I think sometimes um, some of the the things that we're criticized for can come from too. Um, but I think, you know, I can only really talk about our own circumstances and our own situation. We've been very mindful. Like we've just to, we're about accumulating wealth really. And, and we like with the new car we bought, we said, look, let's just buy. Uh, what our egos can handle. Yeah. What our that egos can afford to drive. Right. Um, because again, I don't place a lot of value in cars. I know some people do. Um, but again, it was just a car. We, we, we own it. It doesn't own us. So that was a big thing for us too. Um, but I think, you know, if, if people, one of the things I think where network marketing falls down is when people start to have success, there's no um, money literacy sort of training yeah, and training. development that yeah. goes along with that too. I think um, that's something that um, people probably need to seek for themselves. But again, it's just, uh, it'd be nice to see something like that down the track, I think, um, as yeah, I'm just thinking uh, yeah. that as well on the money. I just, thing. Well, I just mentioned that we just did a, a two hour show on that with four people that have real oh, cool. money literacy. And I want to do more and more talking about that. So, again, maybe we'll put it in a card up here somewhere if you guys want yeah. to find it. <laughs> do it. It is so important. I think it's important for everybody. But in network marketing, you do get this. It is. It's this. It is a low risk. It is because you don't have to invest so much money to get a bricks and mortar business. Mm. You don't, I tried to. I was meant to catch up with a girlfriend yesterday who has just launched this phenomenal company um, globally, and she's like, "I can't come. I've had a literal disaster." And I said to Morgan, "God, we're lucky. Mm. Like we just don't know that in network marketing. You know, our disaster might be." No. Some of like, the, some Oh, of the, you know, they're, they're, no, but I should say, there's <laughs> disasters, you know, companies do shut down and there's all those things still, but you don't carry that loss, right, technically. So I just said to Morgs, we're so lucky. So I think the more that we can learn ourselves, we even need to get better, better and better and better. Like we'll never stop learning our own financial literacy within this. Yeah, I, and again, you know, taxes. So many. I, I've <laughs> I've met so many people uh, who are you know top leaders in companies who you know they're they're struggling with the tax man because suddenly they go from a, a an employee mindset into an entrepreneurial mindset and don't realize that yeah they just made twenty thousand dollars but half of it's the tax man's right yeah. so they start yeah. spending it right. Um, that's the other myth. I just want to before we get into the real journey and the juice and why it's worth it, which is really why I want to end our call. Uh, show whatever we're gonna call it, um, but the, the the millionaire thing, right? I mean, I remember one time I was badging a millionaire, and he we, and I was joking with him because I, you know, me, I'm, and I'm giving him a kiss. He says, "I'm a millionaire. Why am I so freaking broke?" <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> right? But there's that 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 thing about, and I want you to both jump in on this. Is like you know, paid as title versus what you really are. And living up to it, so you may have had, like you talked about, you know, earning four hundred thousand dollars in one year, and then back down to two hundred. Which again, because you were managed, you understood the real journey, and that's where we're going to end this, so people get why this is so cool. Because it may sound horrendous right now to have a, a pay cut like that, but um, but the idea that um, you know, you, 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 let's say in, in in your particular compensation plan, you may have a five star, which could be a three hundred thousand dollar a year income or four hundred thousand dollar a year income, but you know, let's say you're paid as a one star, you know, but everyone you walk around and the badge means something. And it's kind of, it's it almost feels like if we had the courage again 
to take it and put the real badge on, but then people's egos and, and they'd feel even more deflated. So it's kind of like this weird balance, isn't it? So what's yeah. been your experience with that? And what, what advice would you get, give someone who's listening, who's gone through that up and down and they're in the down part and they're thinking about leaving or quitting. They're thinking about doing something else. Let's have a little chat about it. Oh, I think this is such a big one. I just need Sorry. to like smack my dog because he's like, Susie. No dogs were harmed in the production of no, this. I just told him to stop. <laughs> he, he? He's like snorting and he's snoring. Not, oh, no, I thought that was Morgan. Everyone thought it was Morgan. You just smack your husband and say, stop it. Yeah. Stop that, honey. Yeah, he's not happy. Um, our beautiful fur child always with us. No, fur so baby. This, so it, our fur baby. Um, it is such a big thing in network marketing in general. And I think for us, I'll speak for us and then I can speak to it more of it. I think this is where um, value alignment is a big thing because I know for us, you know, the, there's a top um, rank in our company and they actually now reward it to, to stay paid ads, which is phenomenal. Um, but the integrity for me to have that title, you know, executive, I've stayed paid ads for seven years. So I think if it's an integrity thing for me that's how I've always and then telling the truth so being having no qualms about going what's your biggest year saying it you didn't then ask for my smallest but I'll say it because then I don't ever want people to be like oh well that's amazing but it's like well hang on the truth is we've then you know dropped but we but think about that think about the fact that we still as two young kids I think 32 and 36 um, for seven years have earned still a multiple six for your income in network marketing. I don't, I don't, I don't look at the cutoff, the, the drop off as, um, oh failure. my God, that's failure. I look at that as normal business cycles and I look at that as life and I look at that as learning and I look at that as um, a challenge that I get to overcome and I look at that as um, being able to relate when other people go through it. So I think for myself and I know you can speak to this mm. as well um, if we as a profession across the board could tell the truth with compassion David T.S. Lewis da, 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 da. Ta -da! that's it one of our favorite quotes of yours um, tell the truth with compassion and have no shame around it um, it would change the profession well it would, pre it would prepare so many people for reality versus the myth because they think everyone else has got it. Go I always say you never know what's going on in someone's bedroom or their bank account, you yeah. know, and right. And you think about, you You talked about your car there, you know, you know, I, I could afford to buy any new car I wanted, but I, I buy used cards. I buy used everything because yeah, well, of, uh, my, yeah, my mindset around money. But I know a lot of people replace their car and they've always got a car payment. But the reason they replace it isn't because they love cars. It's because they want people to see some form of that success. Whereas good. when you're pulling up after seven years in, what was it? You got a Hyundai or something? Hyundai, Hyundai i 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you pull up with integrity and love in it and you don't give a shit and no one else cares. The truth is no, no one cares. No one comes up and says, oh, my God, she's, she's driving a Hyundai. They look, you walk out and say, oh, my God, she's so happy or she's so present or she's so kind, right? Well, do you want to jump in? We were kind of yakking a lot there about this. No, that's so, fine. Um, yeah, ranks is what we were talking about. Yeah. And look, I think ranks are important. Um, it's important for people to have goals and, you know, they've got to know the stepping stones and what the direction is and, and to be rewarded and recognized along the way. And, for, and I know, one thing I know is like the high and the excitement around hitting a rank compared to uh, falling back, I think far outweighs the negative emotion. I think the positive emotion that comes along with achieving a big goal and the excitement is definitely worthwhile but I think at the same time what people need to understand is when you see the ranks and the on the badges and you're at an event that is someone's best week or month when yeah. the stars aligned and you know the, the <laughs> all that stuff and everything just came together and that's you know they're there you you're, don't compare your where you're at right now to someone's best that they've ever ever done because that's not realistic either i think as well so I, I agree with you it's hard to say well, i don't know what the middle ground is but i still think you know the ranks are so important as well because of the, the feelings that it creates for people and obviously it's a goal post for it's sure. a goal post yeah i think you've got to have them as well but i think people need to understand at the same time that you know it's your their best is not any reflection on where you're at I think that's such a good point. And I think it's more, and David, I think this is another one of your quotes, but I always say it. They say that, and I used to say it like external to network marketing, that the um, comparison is the thief of joy, joy yeah. but it's the death of a network marketer. Yeah. And it, it is. 
It 100% is. And I think it's a death of integrity. I think it's a death of um, misalignment. I think it's, and it's so, ergo the death of a network marketer. Because if you get stuck, if we get stuck, if I get stuck looking at others going, well, you know, and to give the perfect example, especially if you're in our company watching this, you know, we've done this seven years. I thought I would be maxed out, you know, and in a million a year four years ago, like stupid, but um, big dreamer. But, and I'm not there yet, but now I've learned and, you know, I can look to others and go, well, why not me? And now I just think, well, this is my journey and I can't compare because it will fundamentally, fundamentally take me out of the game. Mm. So that just, it's, that's the best point. We need them, but it's, we can't compare. Sure. And so, so wrap this one up and we're going to talk about this for a little bit. You know, there's been so much truth sort of laid through this conversation and the fact is you're here you have a kind of a, a 2.0 vision now as you build your foundation. And you're, I, I've never seen you more certain. I've never seen you more grounded. I, when we were in uh, Tasmania, I was watching you both and just as that kind of level of certainty that you have. Um, talk about the vision now. Now you've done the apprenticeship. And most people, again, if they're really honest, and you mentioned a doctor, most doctors are eight years studying before they even start with patients. But, you know, you're put your four, four years apprenticeship in, you're now three years in the field and you know, you've built that stability, but you've built the knowledge and the, and the know-how and the systems. Talk about the vision, talk about why, why this profession, <laughs> why would someone listening decide to do this? And you know, people say it's hard, but I think hard is going to a job you hate. I think hard is, you know, having a company where you're working 24 seven and you can't sleep and you, you know, you're always paying yourself last and you haven't had a vacation for 25 years. So there's lots of hards and I say, we've got to choose our hards, but why not talk about, you know, so that someone can maybe make a choice to say, yeah, this is a worthy journey and it is a real journey. And I always say 10 years, you're coming, you're three years away from your 10. And I think 10 is going to be the magic place where you start to really crystallize these goals and dreams that you have. Um, but do you want to talk a little bit about that? Why someone should say yes to this profession and, and what it's really about? You want to go first? Cause you go first because you, you have these conversations a lot more All than day. To, to people <laughs> about why they should say yes. Okay. And then you. So the vi- yes. And thank you so much, David. And I think we feel that. And I think that we even feel that as a couple, and I know I said, um, and we can, we'll maybe talk about this in the next one, but today's Morgan's 60th anniversary of, um, of coming into the profession and it's seven and a half, I think for me, or just on. Um, but we've kind of spent six years figuring this out within mm. the profession and we get it now. It's, we've got it, we're, we're grounded in it and we know. So for me, the vision is that, and I've been saying this probably for about a year, um, but it is just not a matter of if people do network marketing anymore, it's a matter of when. And I've watched company after company after Virgin, Qantas, all the big, huge, multi-billion dollar ones move to a model of network marketing. It's all becoming referral based. Referrals, yeah. It's all referrals. You, gyms, everything, everywhere credit around cards. credit cards, everywhere you look, you are now um, operating in the network marketing business model. So you're already doing it. And I just say now, it's like, it's not a matter of if you then join a specific company, it's a matter of when. And so for us, it's, it's we're now trying to educate and really raise the profession up more than ever in the sense that it matters which one you then join. Um, and then within that, it definitely, you know, it also matters which team you join and all these things. So the vision for us is now, I wrote it the other day in, in my little goal book, but it was, it's now still forever developing and, you know, raising our team up, but it's really about... Um, I always say a rising tide lifts all ships. And I think for our company at year 18, I fundamentally believe that health, you change someone's health, you change their world. And that's what we're about. And so I always go back to that. And I think if you then want real wellness and it's, it's about the financial wellness as well, and that's what our company provides. So the vision for me seven years in is that, and I know it sounds cliche, but I feel like we have literally spent seven years figuring it out, failing forward, laying the foundations, learning through our challenges, um, becoming humble, um, losing the ego, all those things. And now is the time. And it's about helping people, shining a light, 
not just on our company, but on the profession and allowing others external to it to look in and go, okay, this is where I want to, you know, hook my own carton and, and wagon to. Um, you know, we believe ours is the best. We know it's the best, but um, it might not be for some, but it's like it's, it's helping people see where their wagon will fit into our company and in a certain team um, and how we can change their life because that's... Well, we are, and we all, maybe we'll do a whole show on that, on picking the right home because I think there's so many nuances that a lot of people don't know. In fact, I had a guy phone me today who you both know and talk to me about this new startup, you know, and we just know the horrendous fallout from startups, you know, 2000 companies start a year within 10 years, a half of one's left. <laughs> we, did, we, we, did, we talked about this on a podcast the other day. We're like, we're going to do a whole podcast on what you have to look for. Cause it's so important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it really is. Uh, but Morgs, let's finish this one here with this, you know, this, this conversation about the vision you have now and, and, you know, why, why this profession and where, where's your vision at? What do you see happening? You're six you, you you're six years, she's seven and a half years. Let's just go to the 10 year mark. What do you see happening with your business right now with everything you've learned and the groundedness? And I, again, I can tell that your business is starting to really sort of, you know, because the foundation's there and you've been consistent. So, Sure. Okay. Well, there's a few questions. So I'll just, I think I'll start with um, why sort of, you know, why people should be looking at network marketing. So there, um, every 10 years, I think the economy just lets us know mm. that jobs can be vol volatile. Um, so I think whether you want to dive into this head first and get the tattoo and become a professional network marketer or you just want some extra money, I think everybody fits into one of those categories and to not have something like this, even if it's only generating 500 bucks a week, I think that's just a necessity. I think if we, even if we look at the events of the last six months uh, this year alone, I know, you know, here in Australia we've had everything from fire to flood to you name it. Um, and there's been serious disruptions to people's incomes. So I think having something like this to give you some breathing space to fall back on in times of desperation when there's lots of hurt out there, I think that's really important. I think everybody should be looking for something like that. Whether it's, whether it's network marketing or not, I think, I think it's the best one to look for. Um, but those things, in, especially in the next five years, are going to become so, so important. And um, so I think moving on from there, I think the more... Uh, good people that can find their way into our profession yeah. and show it in its true light. I think that's good. Like Anna said, it's going to rise the tide, raise the tide for all ships um, and really just help continue to legitimize network marketing as a, as a, a proper path for people to follow. Just not just for obviously pro products are great, but when we talk about our financial well being and yeah. financial longevity, those things are going to become more and more important as we move forward. And, Network marketing is a people business. There's always going to be a place here for people. AI and robots yeah. can't do what we do because it's all about connecting with individuals and r robots and AI don't consume product. People do. So there's always going to need people to connect and promote those. Um, my vision, I think, in the next, you know... Within, Where are we going to be in year 10? Year 10. I want to hear this. Jeez, I haven't really, th I haven't really thought about it. So I, I, I'm glad yeah, this, you're hearing it here first, everyone. <laughs> yeah, I think, look, in the next... I think, like, I can only speak for ourselves and our company. I... I I'm a one, we're a one company couple. We've never been anywhere else. So, um, but for us, obviously, um, and I know a bit more about what's coming than, than perhaps others do, but um, just obviously becoming the pinnacle uh, of our industry yeah. and hopefully becoming the pinnacle within our company as, as an example of what's possible, um, continuing to lead the way with just great products, good value products that actually meet people's demands and solve their problems uh, and really just, you know, uh, hopefully continuing to build wealth, grow income, diversify our, our own investments, travel around the world with people like you. Um, you know, one of my greatest things is, is that I'd love to be able to do is to be able to pick up the phone to you and say, David, where we're, we're going to be is somewhere in Europe um, in two weeks time. You want to meet us for lunch? Yeah. And just not have it be a thing, but also to have other great friends that we can do that with and just be like, hey, this is where we're going to be. What are your plans? Can you make it? And just to meet up in some country, um, you know, that, and that we're, all, and we're all there having a great time and not having to worry about getting up to go to work or being at a desk on a certain time because I lived that life for 10 years and I'm, I'm not too keen to ever go back to it. Yeah. Uh, so I suppose the greater vision for me is really just about, you know, building on, building on freedom, but taking it to a whole other level and taking people along with us too.
Well, you know, and that's one of the reasons I always say that when I'm doing something fun. So, so for example, I am going to be in Greece in two weeks. This is the only country in the world that's open right now for a Canadian. Yeah. We can't get there. We, we, can we said this yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I was going to invite you for lunch, but when you can get there, you can come over, right? Um, we literally <laughs> looked at Greece yesterday at the bar. We were like, let's go to Santorini. Anyway. No, no flights. No flights. Yeah. yeah. Well, we got, I'm flying out on the 8th uh, again, unless something changes. But hey, guys, this is uh, incredible. Uh, we've got lots more to talk about. Uh, so easy great conversations are easy they just you know there isn't any planning needed you know our planning took about what four seconds yeah you know, and then we just push record um you know anyone listening that it's called my extra mile because it's about those incremental steps so it's like one percent that if you could just you know apply that one percent rule to each and every day and to expand your either your mind your your understanding your knowledge your skill sets you know and that's really is where you know how to, how we build to, to to create the lives that we truly want so Anna and Morgs, I just want to say first, thank you so much. I appreciate you. We love you. We, oh, I love you too. We and, love you. Uh, and we're going to be doing another show together, which is all about your relationship. So look out for that one. It'll be coming up soon. <laughs> and we'll bye. Yeah, bye, guys. We'll definitely see you on the other side.